Heere, dat ons die beeld, Heere, die woord kan uitlewe, Heere. Heere, dat mense sal wil hee wat hulle sien, Heere. Met die geest van God, die geest van waarheid, die geest van liefde, wat in en dier ons werk kan. Heere, is rechtvaardig, jy is heilig, Heere. En wat een voorrecht, Heere, is dit nie, om jy te kom loof en prijs, Heere. Want jy en jy alleen is waardig. Dit is een voorrecht, Heere, om as een lichaam by mekaar te kom, Heere, en op een sondagochtend, Heere, jy naam groot te maak. En Heere, net jy te besing, Heere, die groot genade en die liefde, wat jy vir ons het. Heere, ek bid nou een sien oor hierdie diens, Heere. Ek bid, Heere, dat jy my lippe sal kom salf, dat ek sal spreek, Heere, dit wat jy wil ek moet spreek. Heere, dat jy elke hart, wat hier is vir oogend, sal voorbereid, om te ontvang dit wat die Heilige Gees, by elke persoon, individueel wil sê. Jy die vermoe, Heere, om een boodskap te vat, en het op te breek, dat elke persoon wat hier is, een ander boodskap kan kry, soos wat het dier die Heilige Gees, in baie persoonse hart, gedeponeer word. Heilige Gees, jy is welkom, in Jesus naam. Amen. Dit is voorwaar een wonderlijke voorrecht, om vir Dion en vir Anne hier te hef vir oogend, en hulle diepspore getrap daar by ons in die homesel ook, Dion, een oud polisman, ek ken sy hart, ek weet waar hy vandaan kom, en ek weet waar die Heere bezig is om te gebruik. Dion, Elna, ek staan verbaas, met wat die Heere bezig is om dier julle te doen, en houd so rik. En die trane in jou oor, my boete, is omdat die Heere jou hart besnui het. Ek het nie gegloed, dit is moendlik, dat die Heere dit met julle kon doen nie, maar jy het, en hy gebruik vir julle krachtvol in die omgeving, en ek het vir die ongevraag, as hy nie omgeen nie, kan jy en Elne net so kortliks van ons, ek weet jy kan nou baie praat, maar net kortliks kom praat, hoe die Heere julle gebruik het, en ook die teenstand wat julle al gekry het, van die kerk af, kan ons die maai kry kief as jy nie omgeen nie, dankie, kom staan nader, somme jy boe vir die Zoom ook, die mense wat Zoom kom kyk, Dank u, Dio. Goeiemorgen, allemaal. Jullie ken my, jullie weet wie jy sê. Ek wil net een ding dankie sê. Ek kom my nie toe nie. Ek kom God die almachtige vader toe. Want hy is die koning van die konings. Hy is die skepper van elke persoon wat hier vandag sê. En sonder hom kan ek het nie gedoen het nie. Toe hy my geroep het in 2015 en gesê het, ek moet uitsoeing toe gaan te lachen. Toe dink ek, Weet jy wat, ek is ons gedoen, ek moet my lappie drie keer uitse. En die God het my een woord gegeen vir oudsroon. Hy gee my Jesaja 60 vers 1 tot 3. En allemaal van ons wat hier sit vir oogend weet en wat die tyd ons is. Hy sê, staan op Jerusalem. Jerusalem, oudsroon sy naam in Hebrews beteken klein Jerusalem. En het sê, staan op Jerusalem, oudsroon dat jy licht kan gee vir die wereld. Die Heere is by jou, hy maak jou oudsoorn, soos een licht wat skyn in die wereld. Dit is donker in die wereld, daar is duisternis onder die volke. By jou laat die Heere dit echter licht wees, hy is by jou. Hy maak licht vir jou, dat jy ook een licht kan wees. Die nazies kom na jou licht toe, die konings van die wereld kom na die helder licht wat by jou skyn. Dit is soos andere nou gesê het. Ek kan daar daar oor praat, wat die Heere bezig het. Oudsoorn gaan ek die boets word by 2030 vir Suid-Afrika. Hy gaan ek die boets word vir Afrika en hy gaan ek die boets word vir die wereld. Wat daar gebeur in oudsoorn, soos wat Boeta sê hierso, is dat toe ek oudsoorn toe gaan, eerstens wil ek sê, die verloore sien het huis toe gekom. Ek is by my huis. Ek het een geestelike vader, Jan Nigo, wat my geleid het, en dit is nie met die hond nie. Ek is dood in Jesus. Ek sta net vir God en God alleen. En in uitsoring waar ek beweeg, bel die pastoor in my. Dit is nou die dag 12 gewees wat daar gesit het. Toe vraag hy vir my, 
وی اس یی سیک ہی دی ہیر ہے کہ سو بیون سکتے ہے کہ سو آئی دی بک سو ایک بیون سکتے وات سوک یی ان اوت سوئے سیک دی ہیر ہے کہ لئے ووڈ سو فا اوت سوئے جیسائی سیستہ فاس ایون ٹو تری پولس سیدے ات گسکریوے دی ہیر دی انسپراسی فان ایلہ فکیس ایک کسیس ویڈی انسپراسی فان ایلہ فکیس مار ایک ات توی بکا آف گسکریف پروفیتیسی بکا اوار اوت سوئے en dit het nog nie in vervulling gekom nie, wat doen jy, jy is een inkomeling hierso, wat soek jy en jou vrou en jou mense hierso, want hulle hou Dewald en Denise is ook daar, hulle doen ook hulle goed is, tans is ons al 24 geestelike leiers, wat God gesteer na uitswerkie, met die selfde doel, en het word al hoe meer, daar ou sê vir my, dit kan nie wees nie, een inkomeling kan nie een geboore uitswerking nie, wat doen, wat ek doen nie. Hy sê, dit is nie moendlik nie. Ek sê, maar weet jy waar oor gaan dit? En vandag moet jylle mooi verstaan, mense, wat ek nou gaan sê. God is bezig om die geestelike leiers te sit. God is bezig om die hoogmoed van die geestelike leiers tot die val te bring. Want vandag gaan dit oor die geestelike leiers wat hoogmoedig is. Die een wil beter wees as die ander, die een wil mooier preek as die ander. Hulle wil nie nederig wees nie. Weet jy wat kie? Jy het die beste identiteits curriculum kursus nou aangebied aan vier kinderkies nie om nederig te wees en te daal na hulle vlak toe. Dis wat God wil hee. Ons moet daal na die vlak toe van die wereld maar die woord van God aan hulle verkondig. Ons moet vir hulle sê, ons moet nie bang wees nie. Dit het so ver gegaan nie en oudsoorn, as hulle my sien, dan sê hulle, hulle pastoor, hoe gaan het pastoor? Dit sê vir my nie, as ek nie, as ons die ons kut is, want die Heere ordein my, in enige veld, wat jy wil wees, as jy in hom loop. Jy moet nie die verloore sien wees, wat huis toegevang, en by die huis gekom het, en dan moet jy kies, vir elke ding, wat gebeur in Suid-Afrika, in die wereld, is daar, een boodskap in die boor, in die liefdesbrief van God, Hy het nie, God het nog nooit in sy leven slechte mense gemaakt nie. God maak goeie mense met slechte gewoontes. Ons het die kese, 98% is ons kese wat ons kies, wat ons wil doen, maar ons geef Satan die skuld en God die skuld, maar dit is ons kese wat ons doen. En dit is ons kese wat ons bereik in die wereld, in die buitenkant. Ons is die voorbeeld wat ons voorstel daar buiten. En die voorbeeld dat ek voorstel, ek is by die politie, ek is betrokken oor ons daar, vir die eerste keer in 175 jaar, hier is een boete wat ook in die politie was, doen ons een geestelike padblokkade, met al die instanties, politie, weermag, correctieve dienste, en die verkeer, wat bybels uitdeel en die woord verkondig, dat die provinciale commissaris, van die politie, nou een brief geskryf het, spiritual crime prevention, word een deel van die politie, en word nou een afdeling van die politie, waar geestelike goed gaan verkondig word. Die onderwijsdepartement van Westkaaf het ons geroep en gesê, godsdienst word weer in die skole aangebied. Ons bied nou van volgende kwartaal, nou na die vakantie, begin ons elke maandag en dinsdag die woord te bedien in al die skole, woordskool en laarskool. Ons is bezig om, ons soek vir fondse, ons wil vaardigheidskool bouw, waar die ou uit die tronk uitkom en werk kry waar hy weer tweede kans gegeer word, en waar, as gevolg van die kibboots, waar hy geleer word om landbouw te doen, aquaponics te doen, al die type dinge te doen, maar weet jy wat, die geestelike leiers, as hy met my praat, en ek sê, God het my gesê, wil hy weet hoekom, en hy wil die plan van God steel, vir hy eie gewin, en God laat het nie toe nie, ek is so, oor die sofa kyk, kan ek nie skok met jy die boodskap geef, Hoor jy so nie? Die Heere sê so nie. Later het Jesus vir die mens gesê, hoor my, en ek wil hee, nou hierdie boodskap moet jylle baie mooi vat vir jylle sê. Dit is baie moeilik, baie moeilik, om een van my volgelinge te wees. Nie ek nie, hier skra net, in Lukas, Lukas sal hy skryf net. Om dit recht te kry, moet jy jou eie belange tweede stel nie eerste stel, tweede. Jy moet as te ware jou doodvonde steken. 
gesagt, nie. Ich habe mein Gott von uns lang von geteken. Ich habe nicht besef nie. Je elke Tag je Christ auf die Tel und achter mei an die Stab. Als je echter kies um für jezelf zu leben, kann je auf die Au end alles verloren. Aber als je bereit ist, um alles preis zu geben, zu willen von mei, soll je für altijd leben. Gott hat dieses Wort für mich gegeben, durch eine Ausführung und Einstab. Ranger Grebe, circa von 2005, wo Gott für mich sagt, ich kann Ausführung tun, ich leiste nicht, circa um ein Kreis auf die Rift, als Erkennung für was Gott tun in Ausführung. Er konnte nicht tun, auf ihn nicht spalen für uns. 2008, wo er uns moet, er ist vorher Jahr auf der Rift, mit Paaspies noch an. Er hat dieses Kreis aufgeregt, und er ist Kreis gekein, von 6 Uhr an, tot 6 Uhr auf ihn. Als er teken, Für Gott wird er besucht. Die KKNK ist finish in Outsourcing. Die Deivel wird nicht mehr dazu geladen mit die KKNK. Nie. Wie ist die erste Person, die in der Reihe da ist, die eine Boote kriegt, geht in die Reihe und sagt, nee. Hm? Weil uns ist die Ecke gefragt von Gott, wie es weiß, dass die KKNK klar ist. Die erste April haben wir uns eine Deklaration für die, alle, alle mit die Opening von die KKNK in 1994 mit die Lemmermen ingebring als ein Bild. Soos wat Moses opgegaan het by die tablet, het is mooi af, het is afval. Het het hulle meer min ingebring, hulle het die trok opgemaak, met die bille wat uitgehaal het. <coughs> nou, wat ons teen dit? Daar is een so groot soos hy nie daar achter, hy swaar boor daar achter, hy bring boor, is een meer min geteken, van een meer jylk, vir uitsoring. Daar is een beeld gebouw, vir uitsoring. Die watergeest het dicht, dit is vir 7 jaar swaar gegaan het. Nou, die eerste april, het ons een declaration, dat die watervallen gaan doen, daar in Meiringspoor. Ek moet eindelijk een foto gewees, maar as ek terug kan, sal ek dit julle wees, waar God die water in goud verander. Ek sê vir julle goud, ons doen die declaration, maar voordat ons uitgaan om die declaration te doen, wat gebeur, ons gaan kyk na die meermin, daar in Meiring, hy is afval, hy is verweid, en niemand weet wie het om afval nie, die beeld is verweid. 1 april, tot nou toe, dat ek hier staan, het het die meeste reen geval in outsoring nie, Eén verspoelingskrijg, hy het drie jaar sy reen gekregen in twee maanden. God is bezig om terug te keer mense. God is bezig om die pad na 2030 oop te maak, want dit is die vorms wat hulle beweer, die illuminatie van die antichrist. Maar God is groot. Vergeet die antichrist. Vergeet, wie is in beheer? My God is in beheer. Jou God is in beheer. Ons God is in beheer. En maak my woord wat God gesê het. You have seen nothing yet. Jylle het nog niks gesien nie. En allemaal wat die is, hoor wat ek sê, ek nooi jylle, kom ons koop een plaas, kom bly op die plaas, want dit is die kibboots, wat in Afrika, waar die mense gaan rechtig kom, om te sien, wat doen God, en hulle wil sien, wie is God, en hoe gaan God lewe. Kom, beleef het saam met my in uitsoring. Wil jy praat oor jou intercessie? Um, ek wil net, ja, voor allemaal een baie dankie vir die voorrecht om een klein woordje te sê, die jere het ons dit toe ek uitsoring toe gegaan het, op wees nie saam met my man, het ek sê vir Michelle, het ek een massive ding gehad in my hart, die jere gaan my massive in ministry gebruik, ek is gereed en, en het, ek is in die huis en daar is hier ministry nie, die jere het my geroep vir intercessorskap in die dorp en in die streets om vir my intervensie te span, met een spanniekie wat ons elke woensdag bid, bid vir die dorp, bid vir die land, bid vir die mense van uitsoring, en dit is dit, en die Heer het vir my gesê, wie is jy die vrou, so dat jou man kan weet, wat ek oor jou moet wees. Dus versorg jy, en dit, my man, sy ma lewe, my ma is oor die Heer, versorg jy sy ma, by die huis, so dat hy kan gaan doen, wat ek wil jou moet doen. En dit was allemaal die proces, van die begin af met dit nie, want ek wil uitgaan, en die Heer het sê, uitgaan nie in die huis, ja, dit is waar jou hoort, en dit is wat ek op die stadium doen, en ek prijs die Heere, want dit is soos my man sê, wees nederig, surrender, alles wat jy het, alles wat jy is, so dat sy wil, perfecte wil kan kom. Dankie jou man. Dankie. Trots op die boete. Wel dan deel. geglimlach terwijl jy praat, want jy het een paar keer die woord gebruik kiese kiese, kiese die titel van die woordskap your response 
wat de kees is. So ek gaan nou oorslaan met die Britse taal vir die, vir die opname, want dat gaan op YouTube uit. Weet David Hogan hier uh, for two days. And on both sessions he spoke about um, Jesus being baptized and the Holy Spirit descending on him and Father God saying, this is my son. Hy krij herkenning. Dis lekker. And we all want that. But immediately after that, he went into the desert. And most of us don't want that. And immediately after that, he was tempted by the devil. And we definitely don't want that. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted. And we don't want to do that. It's the other man's wees, no? So we normally just take out of the word that which is comfortable to us. That what ons will have. But it's called the full gospel. Not just half gospel. It's called the full gospel. That is alles wat in die woord staan. And wie jy ou raak beteker baie besig. You get so busy sometimes that you don't get to behold that we sang this morning. You don't get time to go into your quiet place. To go and get quiet. To go and study the word. You don't find time to fast because you're in meetings and, and, and so on. It's true. And if I may share something very personal with you, in the last week, that has happened to me. In the last week, last week, we had uh, two of David Hogan's uh, team by us on ice. That's all those arrangements. That's over and above your, 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 your dachta. Ek het a klomp medische toetsen ondergaan. Moes gaan vir dokter toe, specialist toe, al hierdie type van goed, drie keer in die week. Ek het vrijdag 26 senior krijgkor de Nel uh, Weermag ouwens gehad, vrijdag. Het was donderdag hier in die kerk gewees. Nou, om dit te doen, is al klomp beplanning wat in die week ook plaas van. So, all of these things took place, en ek kan ander goed ook, die mens het ons huis kom hier, ons moet uit die huis uit, en, en al die type van goed. Nou, in hierdie week. And normally, I prepare two weeks before I, I, I come and stand in front of you and, and, and try and say something. Thursday morning, I was sitting there. I still did not have a word for today. Just because of pressure. And I feel uncomfortable with something like that. So I could have my word to go and I could bet and say, yo, I need a word. En die titel van die woordskap wat die Heere vir my gee is, Your Response. Dit is jou kese, because it's all about decisions. What are you going to decide when it comes to certain things in your life? Sommer die taxi wat voor jou inry, what are you going to decide? If we go back to what David Hogan said. Pray also for your enemies. Now if we have confession time right now. Who of you have prayed in the last week or month for your enemies? Because of decision. You know the word of God says you must do that. You must bless them. Do we do that? Or did we make a decision not to do that? Because we're not there yet for whatever the case may be. Now, I believe that on a regular basis, we become offended. You can sit here in church and the music can be too hard for you and you become offended. It's your choice. You can sit in church and they play music that you don't know of. There's a lack of, oh, licky, ma, there's a doof doof thing and, and you don't like it. 
and you become offended. You can become offended over just about anything if you allow yourself to become offended. And normally that offense is just the beginning of the enemy trying to get to you. Because that offense is going to bring separation. So draw ek kwaad is vir die hond, wil ek nie meer met hom associeer nie. Ek onttrek my. And that's not what the Bible wants us to do. It's not what Jesus wants us to do. It's not what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. But that takes place. And sometimes it can be as innocent as you walk into the church, the church of all places, where this shouldn't take place, and let's say Germine is bezig om met iemand te praat oor die foto's wat jy gevat het. And I walk past her, and I don't greet her because I'm, I'm on my way to come and prepare. She's got a choice to say, Look at that guy. He's going to preach, but he didn't even greet me this morning. It's a choice. Then I will most probably go get some coffee, and I'll walk past her the second time, and I won't greet her again, because I'm focused now on coffee, and I can leave for coffee, so I'm on my way to get coffee. So she confirms that suspicion that I've got something against her, or whatever the case may be, and it's not so. Because a perception has the same impact on you as if it is the reality. Even if it's not true, it, it has the same impact. So I think we take offense sometimes too, too fast. Can you imagine what would happen if Jesus took offense all the time? Think about it. But let's be more practical. Let's be more practical. I'm going to use Bertus and Matilda as an example. This is hypothetical. Let's say Bertus and Matilda are visiting some people. Let's say Jan and Rihanna. Jelle keir daar by hulle. Jelle is mos bier man. Okay? They are visiting them. And Bertus does something which Matilda thinks he should not have done, or said, or whatever the case may be. Immediately, she becomes agitated and offended because she believes that Bertus has done something or said something wrong. According to whose standards? Most probably hers, her, her own. Now my question is this. Was the onus just on Bertus to speak properly and behave properly? Or is the onus also not on Matilda to show the necessary long suffering and love and respect for the husband? Because it's on both sides, is it not? So what we do is immediately when we take offense, what we do is we pass the buck to the other person and answers on scold. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And we can apply that to basically any scenario that I've just given to you now. It can be in the workplace. It can be in ministry. It can be anywhere. You heard what, what Dion said? Twelve pastors and church leaders call him in and will be at wie is jy and wat soek jy nou hier in uitsoring? He could have taken offense. He could have said, well, let me pack up my stuff and let's go. I'm not, I'm not wanted yet. I'm not respected yet. Let me go. He didn't make that decision. I always say that if you take your matric certificate, the symbols on there are yours, not somebody else's. You're responsible for those symbols that are on your matric certificate. And lo and behold, if you have a criminal record, <laughs> you're responsible for that as well. Not somebody else. You were found guilty. But we are inclined to take offense, we are inclined to discuss other people behind their back, where the Bible says if you've got something against a brother, you go to him. You go talk to him. You are supposed to do that in the church. Do you know that? 
You are supposed to go and help your brother. The Bible says outside of the church, people who don't belong to the church, that's God does that, the Holy Spirit does that. But in the church, we must be there for one another. My booty lot on Zadun, we take offense. Or we don't understand the Bible, we think that guy is acting incorrectly. So we need to examine that this morning. How and when do we take offense? Nie jou vrou langs jou of jou man langs jou. Jy. How often do you take offense? You see, even the people that we, that we see today as role models, die gevestigde pastore van oud soorang, is die role model. Gaan kyk what is happening in the church all over the world today. And I agree with you, Dion. The Lord is starting to sift the leaders. And even Paul says, I don't come with elegant words and so on. I speak that what the Holy Spirit puts on my, on my heart. And he, the Holy Spirit will take that. And he will quicken it to your spirit. And if you don't get a message from the Holy Spirit, that's also fine. Maybe the message is not for you. But I've seen in, in, in churches with thousands of people that one message is preached, but all the people get a different message as the Holy Spirit quickens it to their hearts. I know I, had, I need to give you some scripture right now. Because Keith is busy on the script. Hebrews. Estelle likes this, that this book in the Bible. Hebrews. Because she tells me every morning to go make coffee. Because the Bible says Hebrews, not Hebrews. <laughs> okay. We can have fun in the house of the Lord as well. Really, we can. Right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Please listen to this because we're going to come back to this verse. Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are. But he did not sin. Verse 16. So whenever we are in need, we should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God there we will be treated with undeserved grace. And we will find help. We will be treated with undeserved grace. And we will find help. As soon as you take offense, you, you bring verwijdering. You don't want to approach the Lord. You don't want to approach your pastor. You don't want to approach... Uh, uh, the person who offended you, that bring verwijdering, where it says, you will be treated with undeserved grace, and you will find help. Do you want help for that portion in your life that still needs attention, which is not in line with God's word? Because it's a journey. Nie een van ons het al gearriveer nie. I haven't, that I promise you. My wife will say amen to that. Each of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, recounts the moment of Jesus' deepest agony as he hang on, hung on the cross. The soldiers and the people in the crowd mocked him, saying to him, you save yourself. And you come down from the cross. That's Mark 15, verse 30. Matthew 27, verse 40 to 44. Luke 23. What about the things that happened prior to that event? Prior to him hanging on the cross. Prior to him being crucified for you and for me. Now I'm asking you, try and put yourself, like uh, Keith did just now, into the superheroes. Put yourself... Uh, uh, you, Gavin, you, you uh, Kobus, Andre de Kok, try and say, you are now this person, Jesus. All right? You did not sin. That what you did was fair. That what you spoke was in the open. It wasn't behind people's backs. So put yourself in that position. 
and we say, right, how would you have reacted? Yvonne, yay. How would you have reacted? If somebody close to you, like your husband, goes and betrays you for 30 pieces of, of silver, let's say 30 rand, how would you feel? How would you feel if you were betrayed by somebody extremely close to you? That happened prior to the cross. And remember, at that stage, Jesus had done a lot of miracles. He had proved himself. He's quoted from the scriptures. How would you feel if somebody discussed you and arranged for you to be falsely accused, somebody very close to you, and walks up to you and says, and that's how he identifies you, to be arrested. With a, 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 a liefde gebar. But it's actually a betrayal. How would you feel? How would you react? Remember the title of my message. You choose. You. You choose. During this whole exercise, those people that come to do you wrong, to arrest you, one of them gets injured. Your enemy gets injured by his ear being chopped off by somebody else. I think I would like to take a sword and chop his other ear off as well. <laughs> but you go and you find it in your heart. You go and heal him. You go and heal him. It's your choice. Chop his other ear off. Or tell the people with you to pull out your swords and attack them. But it's your choice to say, no, these people that are betraying me, it's fine. I'm going to heal them. What about the, on the church leaders and the preachers of the word and their actions against Jesus? Which you are encountering, my friend. Jesus encountered that. What was his choice? What did he decide to do? What about give you and maybe I don't know. Let's let, who's who's a bad guy? Me. We are standing here, and the community weet. I steal. I rook. I moor. I do all. Keith is a good guy. And we say to the, to the church, you choose. You choose. Who's going to be released? And Keith knows he's the good guy. I know I'm the bad guy. And you all deny him. And you choose me. What about me being the baddie? I ask you, well, I don't ask you, I tell the people around you, Corbus, you, I ask for all these people, take a man's clear out, what he's not in his underbroek is, and I fat a sambok, and I slap you, that you don't know if you're Arthur or Martha is. What is your choice going to be towards me? What is your choice going to be? And then even after this, we're not even at the cross yet. You humiliated by having to carry a cross through the streets of Jerusalem to the place where you're going to be crucified for something you didn't do. What's your choice going to be? What about being thrown down on that wooden cross? And big rusty nails are hit through your hands and hit through your feet, having done nothing. What is your choice going to be 
to those people doing that to you. We're not talking about the music that's too loud in the church. We're talking about people killing you, murdering you innocently. What is your choice going to be? What about hanging on your cross? And even this oaky on your side heckles you and say, do a David Hogan. What's your reaction going to be? Nobody has answered me yet, and I've asked you six or seven or eight questions. What is your choice going to be? But let me share with you what our Jesus and our Master's response was. What he chose to respond, even after he felt that Abba Father has deserted him. Luke 23 and verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And then they went further and even divided his garments by casting lots. What would you have done under those circumstances? But you see, that's not all. Previously in Matthew 18, then Peter came up to him and he said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him as many as seven times? Jesus, who knew what is going to happen on the cross, said not seven times, but 70 times seven times, which just means never stop forgiving. But he knew he was going to the cross. He knew he had to forgive on all those cases that I said to you. He knew that. He could have said, no, just forgive once. Or if I say, me club, don't give the other one. He, he could have done that. Ephesians 4, verse 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you and you and you and me. What is your choice? What about Stephen? You can argue and say, but this is, this is Jesus. This is the Son of God. He can do that. What about Stephen? When they took him outside, picked up the stones, and stoned him to death. What was his words? Not Jesus. Lord, do not hold the sin against them. Man, let ek jou net met kou water gooi. You're going to have a problem with it. No tell ek klip op en ek gooi jou. Hey. Gooi maar. I'm not holding it against you. It's a mind shift to take us from where we are to where we need to be to have the attitude of Jesus. And it's a journey. It's not a switch that you're going to switch on. It's a journey. You see, if we see this prayer of Stephen, this is a prayer of a man that was free from bitterness, despite the fact that people were killing him. That was the method, other than hanging, being crucified, stoning people to death. You see, Stephen could pray that, because he had practiced a life of forgiving others ever since he had experienced the Lord's gracious forgiveness of his own sins. 
Have you been forgiven? Have you been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb? Have you? Then it's time to start forgiving other people as well. No matter what they do to you. No matter what they say to you. You need to forgive them. Then you'll understand the word. Pray for your enemy. And forgive your enemy. When they are stoning you to death. When they are hanging you on a cross. And you did nothing wrong. You will only be able to show God's forgiveness towards those who persecute us if we fake focus daily on how much the Lord Jesus forgave us through his death on the cross. Now my question to you is, and this is a question, and only you can answer it. Are you bitter? Have you been wronged, humiliated, or accused falsely? Have you changed and turned from the ways that people do not recognize this and treat you unfairly? By a keer beyond ons oud polisman en ons sê, maar dit is wie jy is en dit is waar jy vandaan kom. Like they said to Jesus, but didn't you come from... Bethlehem, does anything good come out of Bethlehem? Are there any areas in your thinking or actions that can be identified that are not in line with the word of Jesus or Stephen's example to us? Think about it. I can't answer that question for you. But I promise you, if I'm going to be honest with you this morning, I'm going to stand before you and say, this area and this area and this area in my life, I'm still struggling with. I can do that because I have not arrived. And I'm asking you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to identify areas in your life this morning where you've taken offense and which you, after this morning's message, don't want to take offense again. Then we've achieved something this morning. We've taken one step closer to becoming more like Jesus. Which is our, it's our destiny. The spans for Vias. Listen to Hebrews 4 verse 15 and 16 again. Jesus understands every weakness of ours. Because he was tempted in every way that we are. But he did not sin. So whenever we are in need, are you in need of wanting to change those areas in your life where you still take offense? Are you in need? If you are in need, we should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. There we will be treated with undeserved grace. Sin dit so. Sien dit so waar die vader staan en sê, kom, kom, ek sien hier sy probleem in jou leven. Ek het gewaag dat jy kom. Laat ons hierdie ding kan recht maak. Because this last portion of that scripture says, and we will find help. Not maybe, not Google of ons help gaan kry, we will find help. But we need to understand, who are we approaching? Who is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to you? To me, at one stage in my life, to a younger was, he was an angry God. I didn't want to come near him. He took the life of my brothers and my sisters, my father. I don't want to come near you. You killed Pharaoh, man. His horses, his chariots. You killed your son, Jesus Christ. That was my image. What is the image of God to you? He says, come. Come. Boldly. Nipang. And you will be helped. I 
I encourage you this morning to approach the throne of grace with boldness today, this morning, in this matter. We have a promise that we will be treated with undeserved grace and we will find help. Dion said something that hit me between the eyes because it's also part of my message, Dion. If we are saying this and we do have a desire to fix these areas in our life, the question then is how do we do it? How do we do it? I have a desire and I'm going to do it this morning. With or without you doing it, I'm going to do it. But the Bible has an answer for everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a verse that says, to confess your sins to one another. In James 5 verse 16, it also says to pray for one another so that you may be healed. And that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Another verse that mentions confessing our sins is John, 1 John 1 verse 9, which says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all righteousness. We don't have to figure it out. We just have to choose if we want to do it. So, what I would request you to do, and this totally voluntary, that we divide up in twos, and preferably not husband and wife, but somebody that you don't know. Find yourself a place and say to the person, I want to confess this morning to you in line with the word that I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. I'm confessing it to you. I'm approaching the throne of grace by being obedient to the word. And I'm asking you, my brother or my sister, to pray for me. And then you reverse that. In other words, you just repeat that, but in reverse. The other person then confesses that area or areas of their life. And you pray for that brother or that sister. Because that's what the body is about. Otherwise, we can come to church and go home and come to church and go home and come to church and go home. You can out the rock, man, in the kerk, and you're not going to change. So, as you move that, om te vanner, please stand up. Do that now. And then find somebody to go and pray for. There's no time limit to this. Confess it to one another. Kom, moet nie skaam wees nie. And if you don't want to do it, it's fine. Really, it is fine. Yeah, as a belief, Dion. The mic is down. While, you, while you're doing that, Dion has got a word to say. As a belief, Dion. Um, while Andre was preaching, God shows me this about choice. God, God says there's an acronym what choice means. Choice means this. Christ has overcome Satan in his crucifixion. So that our circumstances could have everlasting life. That is what choice means. So God died for you and me so that we could have everlasting life. So and then I just want to share with you this. The old message that Andre brought is this. The whole purpose of creation was to establish and sustain this result. So that when creation is finished, when the purpose for which God created the heavens and the earth is completed, that which will remain is a man in the image and the likeness of God. That's all we want. Thank you. That brother at the back there, do you want to come forward? Please come.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jere. An i alle Ehre, alle Lof, alle Anbetung, Jere, komm ich dir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jere. Thank you, Jere. Alleluia, Jere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Alleluia, thank you, Jere. Alleluia. Amok. Alleluia, Jere. Prijs die Jere, kom staan hier. Net als wij zoom van mij. Wij hier met ons. Ja, die afsluiten. Alright. Um, wie je wat? Als ik die woord staan, kan ik die werking van je Heilige Geest zien. Ik kan zien hoe die Geest van God werkt in mensen's levens. En dit is kerk, mensen. Dit is kerk. You've got to go home differently to when you came in. Because we, we, we worship and serve a living God. Ik ga het die van vrouw van ons af te sluiten gebeden. Vader, Yahweh, Hamashiach, en dag kom ik in de naam van die Vader, Sien en Heilige Geest hier. Heere, ek bles hierdie kerk hier. Heere, ek kan net praat uit, ondervinding uit wat hierdie kerk vir my beteken het. Heere, dit is waar u, die Heilige Geest, vrylik beweeg hier. Heere, waar daar nie een perk gestel word, of wie ek is, of wat ek is nie, wat ek dra, of wat ek aan het nie, wat wie dra, of wie rei, of wat, waar hy bly nie. Heere, hier kom die eerste. Heere, ek dankie, ek wil vir die dankie sê, vir elke persoon wat die is vir ochend. Vir elke persoon wat sy hart oopgemaak het, soos wat andere gevraagd, heere, dat ons kan erkenning gee van ons foute ook, heere. Heere, daar had ek vir Keith gevraagd vir ochend om vir my te bid, En as ek hier in Pretoria aankom, en sla die politie weer terug, en ek raak weer kwaad vir elke taxi, elke persoon wat nie kan rein nie, heren, want ek denk ek is beter, en ek is nie beter nie. En ek sê vir jy dankie vir oogend hier, vir hierdie boodskap. Wat een uitmintende boodskap, wat een pijkboodskap hier is, gelever dier ons purpose en ons choices hier. Dankie vir elke persoon, elke oom en tanne, elke broeder in Jesus, wees met elke, ga met hulle, Heere, berei hulle harte voor, Heere, dat het net oor u gaan, nie meer oor ons nie. Die tyd is min, Heere, die tyd is min. Is ons lampies vol of is het nie vol nie? Maak ons foute, ja, ons maak foute. Maar ons herken ons foute. En ons het een God, die Vader, wat ons kan vraag, vergewe ons. En ons repent vandag, Heere, wat ook al in ons levens verkeerd gaan het, Heere. Maar ons roep uit na u, o God dat jy ons middelaar sal wees, dat jy ons ondersteuner sal wees, in hierdie moeilike tye, Heer, Heer, waar ons ook al beweeg, dat ons jy voorbeeld kan wees, Heer, so dat jy die licht aan ons voete kan wees, al gaan ons ook dier die dal van doodskaar, Heer, lei ons na groen by velde, Heer, en ons slaan ons oog na die berge, en ons hulp is van jy af, en ek vraag dit in Jesus naam alleen, Amen. Amen. Daar sê, ek verstaan ons lekker thee en koffie, so kom ons geniet het, ons geniet mekaar, mooi dag.